Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added resort and services company with a special proficiency IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Guys, he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's the joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, try to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you can click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now, going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Kmart's last big store closing. What once was an icon is slowly but surely dying. And yes, I am still looking for a Kmart sign. I do pay finder's fees. If you know anyone who has a like a large six-foot Kmart sign that lights up like it came from the outdoor building, I would especially appreciate it. One of those things where they're not gone yet, technically, but I can't but think this is a very high probability they'll belong truly on my wall to function businesses behind me. Granted, I do have a little price sign from there, so perhaps something a little premature. Now, this comes to us thanks to the New York Post, and there you can see the iconic Kmart logo. This is specifically by Richard Polina, who's right over there, saying, quote, One of America's most iconic retail chains, Kmart, set to close the last full-size store in the U.S. And they say that the store is located in New York. Oddly enough, it says it's one of two just remaining chains that once spanned 2,000 stores before the rise of Walmart and Amazon. It looks like October 20th will be the last day that it will be around for that location. Real Estate Investment Trust, Kimco Realty Corp., which owns the shopping center that houses the Bremerton location, also confirmed the store would be closing. There you can see, yeah, the, remember the big Kmart, which, yeah, those used to be ginormous. Or as Trump would probably say, huge, the biggest store, they had all the stuff, they had the blue light deals, who would forget? You can get lobster for basically nothing. Probably just said that, in fact, if you were to ask Trump about Kmart. And I mean, that was a brilliant marketing in terms of giving people, uh, to this day, one of the most revolutionary things in retail, such a simple little idea, but huge results. And this might age me a bit, if you've never heard of it, at least have these blue light deals where periodically throughout the day, they'd have little blue lights in the store to light up and they would have, hey, attention all shop. Oh man, it breaks my heart remembering, you know, attention came our shoppers and they'd have a specific deal. So you, I mean, it would give you an, an additional reason to stick around the store and inevitably you buy more stuff and add more crap you don't need to your cart. And they give you good, a little bit more discount on one of their items they're trying to push. And it was brilliant. Now, eh, granted the nostalgia, I'll probably read a little bit about, um, sorry here, about the actual kind of history. They say, quote, the, the store's location has some boost in sales thanks to the Martha Stewart partnership in the 90s. They also know that, although that, you know, went away several years ago, you know, this, lo- this uh, camera location had 90, has 90,000 square feet, just at least. Now, they know that A.D. Lampart, the billionaire hedge fund manager, who at one point compared to Warren Buffett for his investment acumen, I don't know about that, bought up Kmart's debt and took control of the company in 2003, guiding it out of bankruptcy and engineering its merger with Sears, which, yeah, then he started to give loans to himself and kind of sold off all the remaining assets. So I'm not sure how many people really like Eddie. Granted, some argue that it was the only possible person on the planet who actually loaned the company any capital at all. But uh, still, yeah. Martha Stewart used to be a big deal back in the day. Ooh, sorry. Um, I should have given you a visual warning. There's a picture of her. It's uh, not quite pleasant. Then you can see, see some of the Mar- oh, Martha Stewart every day. That was like the brand that they had. They had the towels. Now, they also know that... Oh, here, here's what I want to show. Kind of the OG, good old, the original Kmart logos way back in the day. Granted, it was founded by good old Kresge when he founded his company... In 1899, which fun fun business back, back, although you can only see that 189, the price behind me on the Kmart pricing sign is 1899 for that reason. He said, quote, Kmart's origins date back to 1899 when Sebastian Spearing Kresge founded the first store, a modest five million dime store in Detroit. According to Transco Investment Holding Company, currently owns Kmart. Kresge quickly expanded to reach over the next decade under the name SS Kresge Company. By 1912, having 85 stores around the U.S., the first official Kmart opened in Garden City, Michigan in 1962. The same year, 17 additional stores around the U.S. opened, which, yeah, grew so much in terms of the company's portfolio. By 1977, the whole company was renamed from S.S. Kresge to Kmart Corporation. By the 90s, they had 2,300 stores with 350,000 employees. But, yeah, it looks like they went bankrupt in 2002. Again, they emerged in 2005 with Sears. And, yeah, it's one of those things where I don't really don't see a, a turnaround coming. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of good people will be out of a job. 
is because, again, when it comes to retail, I mean, Walmart just swiped the floor with all the competition. Because e-commerce, I mean, Amazon just knocked out of the park even more. So very unfortunate news to have one of these, you know, once iconic retail establishments, you know, going the way of the Dodo. And hopefully they're able to find some gainful employment at one of the competitors. Now, I don't think there would be any startups to compete with them. Just because, again, grocery stores in general have a 2% profit margin, which is also known as trash in terms of business. It's very, very difficult to actually keep a company in business at 2% profit margins. But let me know the company. Do you think they'll ever be, I mean, if you look at history, every company that comes does eventually go. Do you think, you know, yeah, actually good. Do you think Walmart will ever go the way of Kmart and eventually Walmart will not be around someday? I'm pretty skeptical about that just because they've shown a pretty good track record of being adaptable. But let me know the comments because as always, be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you can click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe, fight the good fight.